What's up all of you guys that keep reefs under your roofs? Welcome back to the channel. Middle video a few weeks back and in that video I talked about how dinos, how changing lighting and mixing different bubble tip anemones can affect them in a negative way. In this video I'm gonna add three more things to that list and of course if you want to hear my opinion about those things go and check out that video but in this video I just wanted to add three more things to that list. I had lots of folks ask me how old your tank has to be so it's safe to add your first anemone. I had lots of people ask me, do, do I need to have uh, an enemy guard on my power head? And I uh, wanted to add one more thing actually to the list. Let me start first with how old your tank has to be so you can add your first anemone. And of course, I'm gonna start with my experience first. This tank where I have my Colorados, which is 40 gallons all in one tank from Waterbox. I started this tank with man-made rock not live dry and i added live sand which i added carob c special grade sand and i added dr Tim's bacteria into this tank i just added everything to it and i waited three months that tank was just sitting there for three months i would add a little bit of food just so i can get the bacteria going lights off filtration off after three months mark i turn on the lighting i did small water change I added a clownfish, I added a yellow tank, and I added an enemy. Sad to say that an enemy didn't make it. So I waited one more month and I just let that tank be. I added just a skimmer in the back and that's it. I just had that tank running for one more month and then I added two Colorados, which I have now 15 in my tank, which means that me adding an enemy in the four months mark worked out for me. And that's why I've told you in the beginning, rather than that, what I added to this tank, most likely, but not for sure, if you add live rock, if you add live sand, if you add old water from mature system friend or from LFS that has lots of corals in it, if you added that water into this tank, if you added some biomedia that's old, you most likely would be fine with three months mark. Again, I don't want to even tell you sooner, but if you've been in a hobby, if you know what you're doing, you can probably add that NEM a little bit earlier than I did. If you're a beginner, I suggest just to wait, just be patient. If you wanna start your tank with dry rock and dry sand and everything brand new, you don't wanna introduce nothing from old systems, you're probably gonna wait longer than four months. It's probably gonna be like six months or so. All right, with that out of the way, let me start talking about NEM guards and overflow guards as well. Folks will ask me, hey, do I need to add it or not? Plenty of folks don't have it, or you'll see a bunch of tanks that people have NEMs that they're just nothing on the power head that protects it from an enemy getting into it. What I usually tell them, I know not lots of folks own a motorcycle, but basically if you ask a motorcyclist that's been driving a motorcycle for a while, if you ask them if they, they fall down off of it, they'll tell you yes. It's not a question when you own a motorcycle if you're gonna fall off of it. The question is just when. And that's the same thing with the NEM guard and power head. So that's why when people ask me, do you need an enemy guard and a power head? I'll tell them yes. Lots of folks out there right now own 3D printers. So even if you look up online and that an enemy guard is a little bit more expensive, just look for a brighter price out there. You're gonna find lots of folks that own 3D printers that can make you custom anything you want, basically. One more thing about the overflow. On this tank, I do have two overflows, so I don't need the overflow guard. But if you own only one tank that has just one overflow, I would look into getting an overflow guard for that overflow. You can ask me here, Goran, what's, what, what is that overflow guard? Again, it's a similar type of guard like for your power head, it's just this one is going to go in your overflow. As I said, if you have only one tank with one overflow, I'll look into getting that one. Or if you have a tank with a sump and you plumb that tank or you purchase that tank that's been plumbed just with one pipe going down, you might want to put some type of guard, some type of mesh so that NAM doesn't clog. Because if an enemy clogs, that overflow or that pipe that goes down to your sump, you're gonna be in big trouble. That tank's gonna overflow, it's gonna go all over your floors, it's gonna go all over your electric and might even cause fire. And enemies don't really know what they're doing when they're trying to move. They're basically just looking for that next good spot that they can put their foot in. And when they're walking around the glass, they won't stay on the glass most of the time. 
they're gonna try to find a spot where there's some type of crevices and some rubble or a rock or when they find that overflow they're gonna try to stuck their foot into it that's what they're gonna try to do on this tank i had a pretty huge anemone went into one of my overflows as i said on this thing i have two overflows so i'm not very concerned of anything being clogged but a huge anemone went into one of my overflows and then split out there basically when i woke up i just seen an anemone in my overflow and it was two nems out there and they were huge you will never think that an anemone can go into this overflow which it did all right and third thing that i wanted to talk about this video is mixing soft corals with an enemies and you'll be like come on Goran like I cannot even make soft corals and enemies I'll tell you you can just don't overdo it don't have lots of nems with a little patch of softies or have lots of softies with just a little bit of nems one will suffer that's for sure UV health in my case my experience with it is that nems were just not happy I never seen none of the corals perish or none of the nems perish because of mixing these two but I've seen them not to be happy. If you never see an enemy not to be happy, basically tentacles are gonna shrink, and enemies are gonna lose color, tentacles won't be as thick, they're gonna be shriveled up, an enemy is gonna stop eating, or you're gonna see tentacles of an enemy just floating around the tank. Usually when you see that, that's a bacterial issue. And again, UV can help with that. Or you just keeping one an enemy, or keeping just soft corals, and, or mixing them together, they'll be happier that way. All right, folks, I have said lots of things in this video, so you guys just you have any comments, just drop them down below. If you have any experience with this, what I just talked in this video, drop them down below. Let me know how you feel about this. Go find me on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe, like this video, check the description down below. With all that out of the way, see you guys in the next video. All right, peace.